The Seneca County Army Depot is home to what was once the largest stockpile of nuclear weapons in the entire United States. Over the years, a herd of rare white deer within depot fences has grown to hundreds. The Army announced that the facility would close in 1995, along with others across the country. Now Seneca County has to figure out what to do with this patch of 16 square miles. In Seneca County, they're unlocking the gates of history. The Seneca Army Depot was built in 1941 when the War Department decided they needed a place far enough away from the Atlantic coast to house weapons of mass destruction. That's Dennis Money. He's the head honcho here at the Army Depot, part of which is now open to the public. Dennis let our crew come along on one of their new tours where you can instantly feel his deep knowledge of these 11,000 acres. The question, what was stored in there? And they, said, they told me multiple rocket launchers. They had bombs here that weighed over 10,000 pounds. So those are pretty big things uh, to consider. Those bombs and other weapons were housed in these behemoth concrete igloos. The Army built hundreds of them at rapid pace. 519 on the average they would develop or build seven a day. And the record is 13 ammunition bunkers in one day. Wow. And the pictures show all these men climbing over this rebar, pouring the concrete in. And you have to remember in 41 these tools were fairly primitive compared to what we have today. Yeah, this is the, oh, there's the flapper. This is how it would be. Somebody lost a fuse on me. There was a fuse attached to that. But then that fuse would melt. Boom. Close right up. It was attached. Oh, yeah. They really didn't want people breaking in, did they? Yep. And these are special metal. Oh, yeah. Going like that. And this location had an impact on about 150 farm families. Some of them were given as little as three days to pack up their belongings and leave. The land now was part of the U.S. Army, and a small piece always will be. The Kandaya Baptist Cemetery houses more than 800 graves, including four soldiers from the Revolutionary War. 35,000 tons of munitions. 24 miles of fence. And we can't forget one group of pretty rare animals. What I think makes it really interesting is the multiple uses here. You know, you're going to see military relics from World War II, and now it's a nature preserve. Two bright white deer were found trapped in the Army Depot fence in the late 1940s. Now they're a full blown herd. It's the Native American known as the ghost deer. Variation that makes the fur white, but again, they still have some pigment. The population of them in here has varied over the years from over 200 to less than 75. We were only able to see a few on our tour, and they were hidden behind trees and shrubs, but Dennis shared this video with us where you can see them clear as day. I, get to, I think you can see on the bus, when people see a white deer, they say, oh, stop the bus, stop the bus. And even though you might only see a tiny part of the deer that's white because of all the shrubs and so on, they're still excited. And that's the magic of the white deer. They aren't albino, they're leukistic. That means they lack more than just the pigment melanin. The deer were the main reason why Dennis co-founded the nonprofit Seneca White Deer 20 years ago. And our original mission was to protect the white deer but over time, we found that the military history and the civilian history was of equal importance to the people who came here. So that's what we're doing today. We're conserving the white deer and we're preserving the history. Seneca White Deer is trying to balance those two, not only supporting the white deer, but also other wildlife in the depot. Yeah. But the importance to us is that if we can get more people away from their their, their cell phones and their computers and get outside and see mother nature and they will have a greater appreciation for that and hopefully 
uh, help other wildlife that's not as sexy as the white deer to prosper in other parts of our country. You can see foxes burrowing to create new families and turkeys grazing the fields and trees. The conservationist, businessman, outdoorsman has more than 23,000 hours worth of work in this project and 20 years later he's more than satisfied. You've, uh, you've put a lot of work into this place. Yeah. When you look back on it, um, you know, what, what goes through your mind when you spent more than, what, 20,000 hours here? Well, I think it's important for people. You know, well, what I tell people, I said, don't become the richest man or woman in the cemetery. When you're alive, share your expertise, share your money with others that aren't as fortunate as you to make the world a better place. Whether you do it for society or the environment, it doesn't matter. Leave behind a legacy. And I've done that. I have a legacy I can be proud of.